The problem with most drills is number one, they're boring. Um, and number two, they take too long to set up. So you spend four minutes setting up the drill and you screw it up after ten seconds and then you take another four minutes to set it back up. Um, no one's going to do that. No, Nobody's going to go to a pool room and pay for table time and spend all their time in the miserable process of setting up a drill. And you don't have to. Um, there's there's better ways to practice if you ask me and I'm going to explain it in this video and people denounce uh, my way but they're not getting the whole thing and, and the same people say think three balls ahead and they're not getting it either so I mean what can I say I'm, I'm, I don't want to fill this channel up with boring ass drills Boring, tedious drills that nobody's going to do. I could do that. Um, it, it's not only going to bore you guys, it's going to bore me. A lot of great pool instructors and pool coaches and top pros will will tell amateurs don't just throw all nine balls out on the table and just start hitting balls because you're never going to learn anything and you're just repeating the same bad patterns so your game will never progress. And I disagree, but only if the player knows what to do with the information they're gathering by hitting all nine balls. This can work for great benefits of warming up for a tournament and getting your shoulder ready, uh, getting your stroke straight, and uh, getting nervous tension out. Um, but the main thing is if you find yourself with a shot like I'm shooting here on the eight ball and you miss it, don't don't decide that you need to work on this shot because you're missing the entire point. The objective is not to get in this position. So if you miss this shot, you're supposed to miss this shot. It's a low percentage shot. The question is, why did you get in this position on the eight ball? What led you here? So you have to you have to analyze what you did on the 5, 6, and 7 to decide why you got so bad on the 8 ball. And then you need to go back and fix that and address that so you never get bad position on this 8 ball again. Um, if you don't do that, you will keep repeating the same mistake over and over and over again. The objective with 9 ball is to keep the game simple. Um, now, there's times we can't help that when you know, we get a bad roll on the break or our opponent leaves us really tough. So, for the sake of those scenarios, go ahead and practice this shot. But, but the key here is to figure out why you got bad on the 8, not why you missed the 8. Like I said, let's go back and see what led us here. Here's the five ball shot. Let's see if we can figure out if we did anything wrong here. And it should be shot towards center table. We got a little, little too straight in, but I don't see anything. I'm looking at the seven there, and I'm looking at the line on the eight and trying to figure out how to get on that eight ball line. And I threw my hands up like I conceded to it. And there's my mistake right there shooting that six ball. And let's go ahead and, and loop back on that. And I'll show you what I did wrong. And the first thing I did wrong here is concede to it. I threw my hands up like, oh, there's nothing I can do. That That's just a terrible attitude right there. That has to change. Don't ever do that to yourself. There's always something you can do. Before I shoot this and we look at what I did on the 7 or what I could not do on the 7, let's go ahead and cut away to an over table graph and I'll show you what I should have done and what I actually did 
and why it's so wrong. And here's what we have, and as you can see, I'm not straight in. So now let's take a look at the pocket lines. And let's take a look at what we did, and then we'll take a look at what I should have done. The six ball shot is really full. It's almost a straight in shot, so I only have a slight angle, which basically means this six ball is going to take all the English that you put on this cue ball. So if you intend to drive this cue ball into that left hand side rail, that top rail there, um, it's just, just not going to have any English left on the cue ball by the time it hits that rail, so you're not going to get a whole lot of reaction. Here's what I intended to do to get a decent angle on the 7 to get back on the 8. Um, the problem is, it, by the time it got to the rail, the cue ball died and I got stuck on the rail in this position right here. And with no other choice but to put top on the ball because I'm stuck on the rail. I'm very limited all of a sudden on what I can do with the cue ball and how I can get back on the eight. So instead of doing this and struggling just to get to the rail, let's put a little bit of top on it. And let's not even bother going to the rail. Let's at least leave ourselves a little bit of space off the rail and come down under that seven ball line and see what happens. Now to some of you this is going to look a little bit unnatural and just kind of strange because now balls are bunched up in that corner or it seems like in our heads the balls are not bunched up in that top left hand corner um, and you're not on the rail and you're a little close to the rail but you're not on the rail and now let's look at the options you have to get back on this eight ball. So here's what we're left with, and with a little bit of top and a little bit of left hand English, we can spin down into, well, against the eight ball line. I would play this short of the eight ball line, but even if you come up a little bit long on the eight ball line, if you go to the right side of it, you'll still be able to bounce back uh, behind the nine ball. Either way, you're in good shape. So let's go ahead and start from the top and we'll just run it through like we normally do and we'll study the rack. You'll see where the big mistake comes up and where I get in big trouble. And again, the objective is to live and learn and go back and practice where you screwed up. It's okay to throw nine balls out on the table and run them out if you're analyzing your game and if you actually pinpoint your mistakes and work to fix them. Now before I get started here, let's go ahead and stop and look at the first four ball pattern. And note how the one ball is not straight into that top right hand corner. So we can pull back a little bit on this two ball to try to get straight in on the two. And from there, we're just pulling it back a couple inches and uh, forcing the cue ball to the left-hand side rail to come back for a shot on the four. And the five is right next to the four, so we can, we can afford to get straight in on the four. But we'll cross that five-ball bridge when we get to it in the next graphic. shoot the two ball and pull back on the three you know the plan up to the four so let's take a look at a graphic up to the five ball you get the gist of the plan but let's detail the two ball shot and just take a, a recap of the three and four and take a look at where the five is if I hit a stop shot on the two that's going to lead me straight in on the three and I can still get a shot on the four, but it's not a good shot. I'm going to have an angle, and that's going to uh, take the cue ball away from me, and I'm not going to be able to stay on that five ball. So I'm going to have to pull back on this two ball to get the angle 
to get straighter in on the four so I can just leave it right down the table on the five ball. This this pattern here illustrates why I tell players you have to shoot, you have to think, you have to plan at least four balls ahead. That's bare minimum. You have if you're only planning three balls ahead here and you're not conscious of that five ball, what you're gonna do is you're gonna stop the cue ball at this two ball. You're gonna shoot the three ball straight in and you're gonna be happy that you have a straight in shot. And then you're gonna roll up on the three. And then you're going to be on the four, and you're not going to be able to hold it on that five right there. So you actually screwed up when you shot the two ball because you weren't thinking about the five ball. All you were thinking about was the two, three, and the four. So you're going to get to this three and go, oh shit. You see? And this is why the players that watch this channel can kick the asses of the players who watch the other channels. Those guys are telling you to think three balls ahead and they're dead wrong. They're absolutely wrong. Four balls minimum. Don't forget that. Here we are with the right angle on the three to just drive it into that left hand side rail and bounce out straight in on the four so we can just stop the cue ball on the four and have the right angle while shooting the five to come out to center table on the six ball. This looks like I'm about to draw the ball and it looks like I'm cued really low on this cue ball. Um, but I'm just jacked up because I'm on the rail and I do draw it back a couple inches. But um, not enough to do anything more than a stop shot would have done. So that was just a little bit of flash. Um, nothing more. I can tell I'm a little bit loose here and that's one of the reasons I got in trouble here on the six ball. It's best to just stop this ball. There's absolutely no reason to risk uh, getting out of line on this five ball when it's just a stop shot. I mean, I'm saving, what, four inches by drawing it back a little bit when I, it could have wound up hooking up and just becoming a disaster. So, yeah, you should have just shot a stop shot. And then on the five ball, you're just using that rail, bouncing out um, towards center table to try to get the right angle. On the six, um, and my original intention was to come up high on, on the seven ball to around here. And that way it would have been easy to get on the eight. But as you know, a train wreck uh, starts coming up right here shortly. I'm going to take you through the five ball um, to the six because that's where I made my biggest mistake. And um, from that point, I mean, we've already analyzed the 6, 7, and 8 to death. So I'm just going to let the video roll all the way through the 9 ball. And uh, we'll just uh, sit back and uh, dig on it, man. The original intention on the seven, as you know, was to get about here and then go two rails back, use both rails to slow the cue ball down and spin it back with uh, right hand English. This rail, this rail and back, not exactly onto the line, but anywhere around that line would work to get back on the nine balls. When that didn't work out, and I shot the six ball terrible and wound up here. I tried to salvage something out of a similar situation by going two rails with top left hand English uh, to use this rail and this rail and, and go down table somewhere close to that eight ball line. Um, it didn't work, it died, and I got really, really bad on the eight ball, as you know. And from here, I'm just going to let it roll, guys. Thank you all for tuning in. 
uh, another award-winning video coming at you. Uh, the channel's doing well, man. Um, things are going good. Whoever's uh, spreading the message, I appreciate you. I appreciate all of you. Really, I do. I know your time is valuable, and I know you have a lot of things to do. But you're sitting here watching me, and that means a lot to me. Peace, guys. I'll see you Wednesday.